Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you all doing today? Hey Ayakame, how are you doing? Thank you so much. Happy Easter Monday to everyone. Hope you had a good Easter weekend. And thanks, Daka Imanu, Imanu, Daka to Imanu. Appreciate that very kind comment. We are here today, Monday, the 10th of April on the daily market analysis. It's going to be a little bit hard today, I can tell you. Um, possibly not going to have a lot to say, not a lot of setups because markets are very, very quiet. If you're on the session right now, drop a message into either YouTube or on um, TradingView. Say hi, let me know you're here. We'll give it a couple of minutes before we get started. By the way, just want to make sure that the sound is okay. I've just left my microphone on the table. Hopefully it has less distortion and it sounds all good. Hey Spiros, how are you doing? Hey Ayo Daily, Jerry. Hope you're all well. Hope you all had a good weekend. Thanks for that, Spiros. Hey BL. I'm just a little bit surprised to see BL on the session. I thought you would be taking a break given the way the market is moving or not moving. Good to see you here. Hey, Vinesh, Vinesha. I had a very good weekend, very relaxing weekend. I didn't do too much. I had one, one trade on um, Friday, the non-farm payroll, and then that's it. Um, and then a very good and relaxing weekend. Hey, take calculated risk. You made it, 2 a.m. Good to have you here. One more minute and we shall get started. <laughs> uh, Bill just said, just popped by to confirm I should not trade today. I'll tell you what, I actually did have two good trades on um, the yen. So I was very happy about that. For today, this morning, sorry, moving as we were talking about this BL. So I saw that moving. Um, I actually did trade the yen to the upside. Just a small, quick scalp. So that's it. Hey, Nick, how are you doing? Good day. I can't seem to find a good sitting position. I'm moving around a lot. Hey, Maboso. Good to see you. Looking forward to making money this week. Same here. Um, I ended last week at about 4.3%. So I started on the first, I counted on the 1st of um, April to Friday night. Um, I ended the week on the 4.3%. So I'm looking forward to, you know, replicating that over and over before that 16 to 20 pip return, uh, 20%, 16 to 20% return for this month. You know, if you're looking to make money this week, just remember, don't rush into it. Not possibly not today is possibly um, the setups will come, but it's possibly later into the week. All right, possibly from tomorrow onwards, um, but I don't see anything too crazy today. All right, so let's get started. Thank you all again for attending the daily market analysis. Um, we do have the regulars. Regulars, drop a message, say hi, let everyone know you're a regular. You, you know, if I can, I'll give you that little badge to say that you're a regular. And if you're new to the session, which I actually see a lot of new names, welcome. Thank you for joining the session. I hope you become a regular too. All right. During this daily market analysis, what I do is a quick review of what happened over the markets, especially with the non-farm payrolls last week. And then I'll do a bit of a preview of what we could look forward to from now through to the next time we speak, which is tomorrow at 3 p.m. GMT plus 8. Then we look at the technicals, we look at where price is, possible breakout levels, possible trend continuations or reversals. Put that together, 
we identify um, hopefully high profitability trade setups for you guys. But bear in mind, as I look into the trade setups, those are those will be trades that I I have on my watch list. You know, I'll be looking for those trades. But you should also consider its appropriateness for yourself, and that's why we have a quick disclaimer where any information contained on this webinar should not be construed as advice and is presented as educational material only. Your objectives, financial situation and needs has not been considered and you should consider its appropriateness to your circumstances. All right. Also, please remember to do your own due diligence, D-Y-O-D-D, because the contents of this webinar is not intended to be a recommendation to trade a financial product. You know, I do know even in my own team here, um, we have people who trade counter trend, we have people who trade um, longer swing positions. I do more intraday. So, you know, everyone has a different approach to the market. Everyone thinks about different things or prefers to have different kind of trades. Um, those are the things you need to consider before you jump into a trade, even if we do identify um, the possible trade setups. Okay, you don't have to jump into all the trades. And also, please remember that if you do jump into all the trades, it's very likely you're going to be over leveraged. You'll be taking on too much risk. It's going to mess with your trading psychology. So take on a balanced approach, right? Go through this session, ask the questions. Um, at any point in time, if you have a question, put it into the chat. Let me know. I'll be happy to um, address those questions together with you. You know, repeat or explain further if you require. Um, you know, learn from this, and then we could be working together as a community to trade better for everyone. Okay. Hey, Angel Case, how are you doing? Hi, Chiwan. Good to see you here. <clears throat> so with that said, let's keep going. Um, before I get further on, I want to show you this. So this is my profile. Put it onto YouTube for you guys. Um, what we do here is we, you know, at the end of the session, I do have a summary sheet. This was on the 6th of April, Thursday last week. We didn't do one on Friday. We had, well, I will list down what we've been talking about through the session. <clears throat> Those of you who are new or are on TradingView, watching this on TradingView, if you haven't already, um, there is a link down here for the free Discord channel, right? So you can always join the Discord channel just so that you know we have a um, channel or server where i not only i'm able to also share with you you know things i'm looking out for before this session right so i'm looking at kiwi dollar i think on friday i was sharing the aussie where i got in right there I stopped loss of them i think it was way below I was outside of all japan so i got off the trade right there so that was my aussie trade on Friday, I was, you know, I share with you my thought process, guiding you on why I'm in a trade or why I'm out of a trade. So all of that happens, you know, before or after the webinar, the live stream here. You know, if you take it beyond this session, join the Discord channel. It's absolutely free to join. Okay. So with that said, let's look at the news. Sound problem. Wait, um, am I speaking too loud? All good? Okay. I think I'm, let me just do this. <clears throat> Maybe I should stop speaking too loudly. Is this better? Okay. I, I think what happens is that I kind of get overexcited. I speak too loud, becomes a bit echoey. And then, you know, sound goes bad. So I'll settle down. I won't go too crazy. We'll take it from here and see how it goes. All right. Thanks for letting me know Angel Case and Spiros. <clears throat> okay, so looking at the news here, um, main thing, I put it into the chat, into the Discord channel as well, telling everyone that, um, where was it? Uh, there you go, you know major holidays so it's major holidays in new zealand australia the swiss the 
the UK, the Eurozone, all on an Easter Monday break. And that's why we haven't seen too much in terms of price movements. Okay, Euro dollar, two pips over the last six hours, pound, one pip over the last six hours has all been in single digits. Only the US CAD and the Aussie and actually the yen pair is moving a little bit more, but not super crazy. Okay, so just be aware that <coughs> no man. Just be aware that um, markets, a lot of markets or the major markets are closed. The US is still open. The US is open tonight. Uh, we might see some price movements or a little bit of price movements, but I do anticipate that it's going to be choppy. We're going to see choppy price action um, today. All right. But let me do a quick review of what happened last week. So Ayakame said NFP was profitable for him. Fantastic. Uh, Vinesha said great trade on the pound yen. Yes, I'm super happy on the pound yen as well. I, I did um, write that. I closed out a little bit early and then after that I got in again and I took a trade upwards. So I'm super happy on that on Thursday. All right. Um, last Friday, we also did have major bank holidays. New Zealand, Australia, Swiss, pound, U euro and Canadians were on holiday. I did not look at the charts at all, all the way through to 8 p.m. GMT plus 8, um, where the U.S. was due to release their non-farm employment change number, was 311K. It got revised upwards to 326. We were expecting a drop to 228. Um, unemployment rate at 3.6, expected to stay at 3.6. A little bit of a surprise here. A little bit of a surprise here because it came out better than expected. And why I say it's a surprise is because um, employment numbers, unemployment claims was, you know, not good and also was higher than expected. The ADP was weaker than expected and also the JOLTS was weaker than expected. So I didn't have high hopes. I did not have high hopes for the non-farm payrolls on Friday. I was actually thinking, could we see um, that weakness apply or resume for the US if it does come out as a weak number? But surprisingly, it came out stronger. Non-farm employment change was 236K, stronger than expected, although less than <clears throat> previous. Unemployment rate at 3.5 was stronger than expected as well. Because of this, what we actually saw on the dollar, let me zoom in for you, was on Friday. There we go. Bring that down. Okay. On Friday, that was a news release, right? It basically went from 101.93 straight up towards 102.29 retrace and then set right there. So it was a quick move up and then the retrace back down, trading along that support level of 102 through to today, climbed up briefly, but then now seems like it's back along 102 again. So because of that, and also knowing that we don't have um, big news events or we anticipate choppy price action for today, I'm going to say that today being the 10th of April, the DXY is likely to um, fluctuate along. Let's spell fluctuate. Trade along 102 as support level. Okay. Um, the last time we said that it was likely to break to the downside at this point, you know, that's out of the question. You can see that this move, big downward move, we've got that FIP level at 50%, and that's where price went up, tried to break, failed one time, came back down. On you know late Friday night or early Saturday morning, it tried to break again and failed. Today, this morning or this afternoon at 1 p.m. GMT plus 8, tried to break and failed again. 
So this 50% Fib level here is holding quite strong, likely to cause the dollar index to come down and trade along this support level. Okay, um, I anticipate that we could see this all the way through to tomorrow where we might see that trade to the downside. All right. Um, one more thing to note is also that, look at that, we got a tail here, we got a tail here, forming that upward trend line, it's going to come down with that bullish trend line, with that horizontal support level, is likely to bounce around along this level, right? Um, maybe a little bit extended and then possibly if it does break down, we're going to see it come down towards that 101.60 level. Okay, so I'm not rushing for a trade. I do see the dollar index dropping, but it does need to break not just the horizontal level, but that diagonal upward trend line. All right, so with that, that was the news from Friday. Any questions on that so far? Yeah, apart from today, then through to tomorrow, Tomorrow, um, we do have some member at Williams speaking, retail sales number for the UK, consumer sentiment for the Aussie, Chinese CPI number, right? Typically, we, pay, we won't pay too much attention to the Chinese CPI year on year. One is, is a Chinese data, so there is that common question or common concern on how reliable the data is. I wouldn't pay too much attention to that. You can see that through tomorrow, we don't have much news either. But although there's not much news through tomorrow, I do expect the volatility, the liquidity to come back in because we've had Friday off, we've had a weekend, and then we've got Monday off as well. So very unusual. Well, it happens every year, but very unusual to have a um, extended period of consolidation. We might see this volatility come back in onto Tuesday, but the big one will be on Wednesday where we do have the CPI number um, for the US and we're looking at a 6% down to 5.2%. I'll tell you more about that tomorrow and on Wednesday as price develops because we do have some time in the lead up to this event. And also if you're looking at trading the US CAD, the Looney, you know, thing to pay attention to is the interest rates decision to come from the Bank of Canada on Wednesday as well. All right. So why I would say pay attention to that is because if you are doing a um, longer term trade, you know, if you're doing a longer term trade, then this news will come into effect or come and influence your trade um, on Wednesday. I'll do a quick overview of what we can look forward to because... Um, because Mabuso said, Mabaso said he's looking forward to make money this week. You know, I don't want you to rush into any trades today or tomorrow if the setup is not right because there's a lot of opportunities ahead. Wednesday, we have the CPI for the US. We have the Bank of Canada with the interest rates decision. Uh, we do have FOMC meeting minutes on Thursday morning, 2 a.m. GMT plus 8. Um, we do have Aussie employment numbers, pound, GDP numbers, uh, PPI numbers, and then on to Friday, US consumer or oh, retail sales number to be released as well. Right? So there's a lot in consumer sentiments later towards, well, at the end of the week. So a lot of news to be released for this week for possible trade setups. Don't feel like you have to be rushing into a trade um, today or tomorrow given that low liquidity that's happening right now. All right. So far, so good. If it's good, let me know. Okay, cool. So now let's look at the charts. Um, the Kiwi dollar, what I was telling you guys just then was that I was looking to see if it was going to break, right? Um, we have one good trade looking at price moves to try for further sell to the downside. In fact, once I wrote that, right, once I wrote that at 12 o'clock, it started bouncing back up again. Okay, so uh, 
it started bouncing back up. It looks like because of that dollar weakness, right? This dollar weakness right now likely to bounce along this 102 support level. Um, this could push the Kiwi dollar back up again, right? And you can see that it has worked very well for us. If you've been following the stream, it's been working very well for us. It's bouncing up. We've had a few good trades. Um, if you did get into this trade on Thursday, it would have a 35 pip move already. Let me just take these away. So what I'm looking for here is if price does push back up, then we've seen that pattern happen as it breaks back into this trend line back towards that resistance level. What you could be looking for here is a buying opportunity at about zero point. Why is it so small here? One second. Uh, I'm trying to zoom in. Give me a second. Um, all right, that will make it a lot easier for us to see. Okay. Hey, how are you doing? Okay, so what I'm looking for here on the Kiwi dollar is possibly a buying opportunity six zero point six two. 0.6256 or 60. Let's do 60. Take profit about 35 pips. And if it breaks to the upside, what you could be looking for is a tight stop loss, right? About 15 pips to a 35 pip upside move towards the resistance level. If you wanted to be safe, you could even say a 30 pip, a 1 is to 2 risk reward ratio to the upside here on the Kiwi dollar. All right. So we're looking for this to push up break above that trend line right break back into that trend line close above 0 0.6260 15 pip stop loss 30 pip take profit so we're looking to buy um, 0 0.6260 stop loss 15 pips take profit 30 pips okay there we have it. Uh, that's the Kiwi dollar not ready yet. Does need to move up currently at about 6244. So about a 20 pip move, just under a 20 pip move to the upside before we're going to see that push, possible push and retest of the resistance level. All right. Uh, next up, looking at the Aussie dollar. We were looking for this, for the Aussie as a counter because we're looking at a Kiwi to drop. We'll say, hey, okay, if it doesn't work, then we might see the Aussie push up. That didn't happen. So we'll take that out. Uh, on Thursday or Wednesday, we saw that come down. Made money on that. Could have made money on that. You see here that the Aussie, again, at that resistance level, support turned resistance, and it's a very key level, right? We tested it so many times over here, most recently again, and then tested it, bounced back up, and then now it's at this level again. Okay, so I've seen we've seen it come down, test this level, and bounce up quite strongly. I'll readjust this. No, I'm not going to readjust. I'll take this out. Okay, so I'm looking at this as a good, strong support level for that upward potential on the Aussie dollar. <clears throat> if we did this, let's see how this works out for us. Right, if it breaks above that 23.6 level, we could see it trade up towards that 50% or that 61.8% level. So what I'm looking for here is a little bit of an aggressive move okay this is the aussie dollar to the upside if we see that dollar index continue dropping you could be looking at above 23.6 so about 0 0.6680 no you'll be a bit safer you can do 0 0.6685 your take profit will be towards the previous swing high stop loss could be about 20 pips I'll say take profit could be about that 40 pip level, right? The previous swing high here that we see. So this point here, 50% coinciding with that as well. So we're looking for this to break up and about a 20 pip stop loss or one to two 
Again, another one is a two to the upside there on the Aussie dollar. All right, so 0 0.6685, 40 pip, 20 pip. Zero point six six eight five stop loss twenty TP forty. All right, so again, a big reminder here is that we looked at the Aussie possibly pushing to the upside. We look at the Kiwi dollar possibly pushing to the upside while well, looking for it where it's going to trade up. Just remember, you don't want to be entering both those trades because that would be over leveraging on one move. Um, in this case, I would prefer the Aussie dollar instead to the Kiwi, right? I think I'll prefer the Aussie to the Kiwi. Um, it just looks like the last few times we've seen it bounce quite strongly from this level. So if it does push up, we could see this as a stronger move to the upside. All right. Hey, JC Chandian, how are you doing? With that um, yen, I tell you that I did trade the yen this morning um, as it broke out. So early this morning, 8 a.m., just a bit after 8 a.m., so I was within this candle. <clears throat> I had that move. I had my take profit at that. Six, I actually had it at 60 pips. Right, I had it at 60 pips there. I had my stop loss at 30. So I had a 1 is to 2 to the upside. What happened was that it shot up, and if I'm not wrong, if I do a Bollinger Band, it went out of the went out of the band, right? The moment it went out of the band, within the hour, or I think the next hour, I closed out of my trade, right? I closed out my trade, so that was a quick move to the upside of there. Um, I did go in for a micro scalp again because I thought it was going to trade up. Um, but there was a few pips and I got off that trade. All right, so there was two trades on the US yen to the upside. For me this morning, I'm not in any trades right now just because markets are a bit choppy and, you know, bouncing all over the place for now. With the way the yen was moving, right? Yes, on Thursday, we were looking for it to test and reject. It didn't. So it tested and broke through that level. Um, I don't know why we have this dotted lines here. But what I would say is that now given this levels, right, I do see the yen coming down, testing possibly that 132 level. So the US yen possibly coming down to test 132. What I would be looking for is a move like that. Right, come down, test this level, and then push back up again, just following that move. This obviously is a counter to what we're expecting on a dollar. We're expecting that dollar weakness, and we can see it here, pushing, we're expecting it to push slightly to the downside. That's possibly going to lead the USDN to push down, test this level, then I'm looking for you know that shift, uh, that weakness on the yen to continue, uh, pushing price back up towards that 132 dot or 133 resistance level. Okay. Um, what you could be looking for is, okay, so what could happen on the yen? It's either going to come down to this level and push up or come down to here and then push up again. So it's either at that trend line or at that 131.80 level. Um, looking for that push back up. What I would say is uh, instead of looking to sell on retrace, we'll be looking to buy on the retrace. I'm not, not confident or not keen to look for a level here just because it could be 132 or 131.80. Okay, 132 or 131.80. Um, as a possible buying level. All right, cool, cool, cool. Next up, pound dollar. I will tell you the funniest thing. Okay, so pound dollar on Thursday, we say, you know, if it breaks above, buy it up, didn't happen, take that away. 
Uh, just this afternoon, we were sitting in the office here. The team was in office. You know, we're looking at this, and we saw the start of the candle. So we saw this pushing down, and at the start of that candle, it was trading down. And we said, "Hey, if it breaks below one point two four, if it breaks below one point two four, we could see a big." downward move we could potentially see a big downward move on the pound dollar but as what would happen once we were watching it it bounced it traded down it bounced off and then the next candle pushed up when right? the next candle pushed up what it forms here is one and two rejection one and two candle rejections of that 1.24 support level all right Hey, Actunis, how are you doing? Hey, Ben Sam, how are you doing? All right, so what I'm looking for here is, you know, that rejection. And it's quite interesting to note is that we've had a rejection. We've had a rejection at this level. Very small um, double bottom formation here. I wouldn't say it's a perfect double bottom, but it's a very small double bottom formation. You can see the last time it rejected at this 1.24 level and when it broke above this point of 1.2425 1.2425 it went strongly to the upside all right so let's take this away for now so it went strongly to the upside what i'll be looking for here is the aggressive approach for the pound dollar will be if it breaks above 1.2425 then you could be looking for that upward move so about 1.2430 look for it to close above similar to this maybe a bit higher take profit would be about 55 pips 60 pips stop loss could be about 30 pips again almost a one is to two risk reward ratio to the upside there for the pound dollar Hey, Sudden Toucan, we are live. We are live. When he said live, so I said, yeah, we are live. Um, buy above 1.2430. Stop loss, about 30 pips. Take profit, about 60 pips. A 1 is to 2 risk to reward ratio to the upside on the pound dollar. Okay. Um, again, right, <clears throat> these are all setups that I'm looking at right now with the current price um, levels or the current price action. Things to note, if you've just joined us, is things to note is that major markets are on holiday at the moment, bank holidays at the moment. So <clears throat> I, as much as I've identified these levels, uh, it's not likely to happen too quickly unless we see a sudden surprise on the dollar index. Um, you know, setup levels are there, possibly something to think about, but I'm anticipating for these levels to be triggered either later tonight, GMT plus eight, or into tomorrow when volatility and liquidity comes back into play. All right. <clears throat> then next up looking at the euro dollar a bit fortunate here on the euro i think somebody was talking about this looking to sell down from 1.0995 that's a uh, far distance away now so i'll take that away we were looking for the continuation to the upside for it to break above that resistance and trade up didn't happen didn't trigger the trade right now still along this 1.09 level okay so what i would update and say is that we do have 1.0887 1.0885 and also um well this resistance level okay i'll update this and say like that 1.089 1.09 let's just Keep it to a round number it's going to stay at about this 1.09 level no clear directions you can see that even on friday the euro dollar traded right across all the way to the non-farm employment change number broke down rebound and then set right across again 
So it's going to, I think that it's going to trade within this range. <clears throat> it's a bit pointless to put in this dotted line because we have the resistance so near. But I think that it's going to do that, right? And if it does break that resistance, then we'll start thinking about possible buying opportunities. But I think for now, we're going to see it fluctuate within this range um, with no clear direction yet. All right, so fluctuate around this range with no clear direction yet. So what I want to you know try and avoid is telling you guys too many trade ideas and then nothing happens <clears throat> because you just want to you know be aware that it's going to be a little bit quieter today. Um, trade along one point oh nine, no clear direction. <clears throat> That's also the reason why I haven't done any outlooks. <clears throat> Sorry, the voice is going. Um, I haven't done any outlooks for today as well, just because of that choppy price action. Okay. Let me just double check something. All good. Okay, great. Um, Okay, at this point, if you haven't already, do me that huge favor. Um, click on that rocket ship button or that thumbs up button on YouTube. I'm sure it will help with getting us more viewership, getting more participants into the session. Alrighty, so next up, Swiss franc. All right, we saw this, it didn't trigger. We were looking for it to come down, test this support level and bounce or test and break neither of that happened it sat right across tested a little bit to the upside and now sitting at that not support let me just clear this chart out all right um we have that resistance level here and a very tight support level it's not really a support level but for now we'll say that's a support and it's going to trade within this range it's going to be between 0 0.907 and 0 0.90. So within this range, you know, possibly looking at this trading to the downside, but uh, with the way the price is moving, you know, just sit there, watch if it moves, possibly going to move, but not a big trade idea there. All right. So US Swiss franc, we're looking for it to trade slightly lower, but just watch. Okay, so dollar index still trading down, we're looking at that. Um, US CAD went up, tested that resistance of 1.35. Right, we can see that point there. So we had resistance there, it didn't turn down that away. Right now, forming to the downside. This could be a move. Um, why I say this could be a move is because if we have this as that resistance, what I like is that it's broken yes, well, today's low. Um, I'll be looking for it to break below that low on Friday. Right. And if it does that, then we could see it trade down. You could be looking for oops, um, on the US CAD. So below 1.3490, so 1.3480. You take profit about 30, 40 pips to the downside. Stop loss about 40 pips or 1 is to 1 risk reward ratio to the downside here on the US CAD. All right, and you can also see that it is breaking that trend line. All right, it's breaking that bullish trend line. Even if I took that end, the tail ends of those, it's coming close, but I like the bodies a lot more. So I like that. So I see that breaking, you know, a confirmation if it breaks below the Friday low, then we can be looking for possibly a retest of the support level. So 1.3480, 40 to 40. 
Um, US CAT sell below 1.3480, stop loss 40, TP 40. Any questions so far? All good. Hey, Jamil Lecher, how are you doing? Jamie Lecher, how are you doing? How are you doing? Good, good, good. Now, what's next? We had cat pound yen. Oh, I love the pound yen. That was a good trade, right? So I was trading the pound yen up on Thursday, right? Um, and got out a little bit early after that. Uh, I did jump into it today as well with the yen. Um, with the US yen, because I was looking at pound yen pushing up, it went up to that 164.50 level. I got at 164.50 and I'm out of a trade. So right now, oh, Jamila, okay. Hey Jamila, how are you doing? All right, so right now it's trading back down. Why is it trading down? It's because of the US yen, all right? US yen pushing to the downside. What you note here is the pound dollar is pushing up. So it's a bit of a conflict because as the pound dollar pushes higher, what we should be seeing is on the pound yen, this might push up, but it's being dragged down now because of that US yen coming down. What, you know, with the anticipation that it might come down and bounce off this level, with the anticipation that the pound dollar might push up, you know, I'm watching to see what happens at this support level. Right, what happens at this support level? Could we see a similar move? A trade lower, test, a rebound, and trade back up again. All right, um, alternatively, you could be looking at that. Yeah, so you know, it fits. We're looking for what happens at that 164 support level. It does look like it's going to test it's going to you know that strength of that downward move looks like it's going to break that support level but i'm still looking for a possible push back up again so i'm looking at about 164.20 uh, 40 pip stop loss 120 pip take profit level so about 164.20 right um test and reject support Stop loss 20, take profit 140. Possible hesitation at that 164.60 level, which we previously identified as well. So still a similar approach, um, just that it's retracing. We're looking for that retrace and then that rebound again. Then Euro pound, um, well, it shot down, could have made some money, went back up, hit a stop loss. Don't know if you got into that trade. I don't usually trade the euro pound. Uh, right now, given that it's pushed back up, the take that away. And I would say that with the way the pound dollar looks like it's going to push a bit to the upside, uh, we might see this trade back down. And you can see that it's been you know, with that dotted line there, has been testing, rejecting, testing now, sitting right at that 0 0.8780 level, looking for that rejection. Play it extra safe is only look to sell it down if it breaks below the previous low at 0 0.8766. All right, so we could be looking at a sell um, bought 20 pip stop loss, right? a 20 to 40 pip take profit level to the downside, only if it trades down strongly and closes below 8.765. All right, um, so we're looking at this to sell down below 0 0.8765 with a um, 20 to 40 Okay, six five stop loss twenty TP forty. I would rank this as a lower chance of happening. It's not something I put high on my list just because um, the euro dollar is just trading right across 
more, not likely to form any strong direction. Or if it does push up, it's going to counteract the move. And the pound dollar does need to push strongly higher before we're going to see the euro pound form any clear directional push. Okay. Um, any questions so far? All good. Any questions? And then uh, this is a short and sharp session today because of the way prices are moving or not moving. Gold didn't push up a retrace because of that dollar strength. Right now, testing and bouncing off this 1988 level because of that dollar weakness. I wouldn't rush in yet. You can see that it's been trading within these levels. All right. So look for it to push back up. Okay, not a great level here. Yeah. All right, look for it to, I'll take this away. Um, and if we even adjust it this way, you, know, you can see that bounce of this level, which was formed 1988, 31st of March, 3rd of April, and most recently 10th of April bouncing up. Only look to buy it up if it breaks above that 2000 level, right? Breaks above 2000, then we could see it climb steadily towards that 2033 level again, okay? So dollar index, I'm looking for a um, break at 2000 level, oops, towards, ah, keyboard there, towards um, 2033. So it does need to break that level before we're going to see a big, what did I do? Oh no, I cancel, okay, there we go break 2000 towards 2033. I'm a bit out of sorts today, typing all over the place, doing all kinds of things. Um, okay, cool. All right, so this is still forming. We're looking at that. Don't rush into any trades at this moment. Actunis just asks, Euro Kiwi. I don't have Euro Kiwi here, so let's do that. Euro Kiwi forming a very nice resistance or rejecting of that resistance. You can see here. All right, so it's rejected once, pushed down, rejected again, pushed down, rejected again. Looks like it's pushing, could push down, but right now pushing a little bit upwards. Um, I would say that if it, you know, to be extra safe is at 1.7477, possibly look for it to break down and then trade to the downside. If it does break above, the last time it was above this resistance level was back in October. 2022 and even then it only went up to that 1.7538 all right so coming back to the present time that resistance level is quite near so i would say this whole thing is a resistance area i wouldn't be looking to buy this up um, i'll be looking for that rejection if you wanted to sell down quite quickly possible but a safer option would be to break below 1.74 and then you could see it possibly even trade down towards that 1.7250 support level. All right, I hope I answer your question there, Actunis. Um, any further questions? I don't have too much to share today um, just because markets are not doing too much. Kishida ruling block wins key gubernational polls. No idea what it is. Yen Sings has out as rate outlooks diverges. Okay. 
Um, so we should be seeing the yen trade weaker, but let's see, yen sank against after payrolls bolstered for the rate hikes. Disparity with the yen where central bank continues to pin the benchmark yield near zero. We should be seeing the yen trade weaker, but what in fact we're actually seeing is it's trading down, dragged down because of the way the dollar index is moving. Okay, so I think if this finds some stability along that support level or fluctuating or bounces off this point, then we could see this form quite nicely bouncing off and also on the pound yen right now at the support level could bounce back up again. All right, I'm still looking for the upside. It's not formed yet, but have patience. It could work out. Chi Wan asks, what's my view on the pound Aussie? Let's do that. I don't have that as well. So pound Aussie. Um, very similar to, well, the last time we spoke about this was in March. Forming that resistance there, we can see straight away, very similar to the Euro Kiwi. Um, does have a move like that or a bit of a more gentle move upwards. So I think it's going to trade within this range. Um, if we anticipate that the pound dollar should break to the upside, <clears throat> that could push this up. But, you know, I do realize that it's been since March last year, right, it's been trading below this level. So, you know, if you're looking to buy it up, then it does, to be safer, it needs to break above 1.8795, or you could trade it up. No, I would say that, okay, here we go. So typically what you could be looking at is a possible um, buy, you know, if it breaks out of that formation to this point. Okay, so look for a breakout above this high. So about that one point, eight six eight zero level um 35 pip to 100 pip take profit one is to three risk reward ratio to the upside on the pound aussie actually thanks for sharing that i think that actually looks like a possibly um good setup so you could try that i'll, I'll put that on my watch list as well um actunis tried but didn't accept i'm not sure um there isn't there shouldn't be a thing to accept or not i think you just have to click on the link and then it joins so you know try it out again try it out again the link should be there dollar has a massive bull flag on mac on eight eight hour candle um bull flag on macd on an eight hour candle how do i get to the eight hour candle let me see uh, I don't know how to get to the eight hour candle. <laughs> Let me see. Hours eight. Does that work? A bullish divergence. Yes, I see that. Um, I see that. I'm not great at divergence, but I think that's a bullish divergence. Yeah, I'm looking forward to test this level, you know, supporting this push. If this support level holds, I do think that we might see this push up. Thanks for that, Gertrude. Yeah, so I, you know, um, watch, I would watch what happens here. The thing about a divergence, my view, is that it could play out, but, you know, we might see it drop back down a bit and then have a tail and then push back up. I think this on the H1 time frame could trade down a bit and then push back up again. Like drop briefly before pushing up. So yeah, I, I like that view as well. Um, Darko Cars asked about the Euro dollar. I did share about the Euro dollar already. 
uh, uh oh, where's my area? So I was looking at the euro dollar possibly going to trade within uh, where is it? Within this range of 1.09 and 1.0920. If it does break, it needs to break above 1.0935 before we're going to see a more sustained move to the upside. But with the way prices are moving, I would say that it could happen, but it might take a little bit longer. Um, I've got one person saying my audio is gone. Can everyone hear me? Sometimes you might have to refresh the stream on TradingView. Okay, good. It, you know, sometimes it's just a stream that goes bonkers. All right, so any further questions? Any further questions? If not, um, I know Actunis said he has an issue with the with joining the Discord, but if not, then you know check out the most recent post on the 6th of April or the one after this session. The link is down at the bottom here. Just click on that and you should get into the Discord channel. If not, drop me a message and then I'll send you the link again. With that said, do remember, not poss possibly not a lot of trades to be had for today, but do tune back in tomorrow, uh, where we'll be looking at possibly you know, a resumption of that volatility and the liquidity, more trade ideas to be shared. Um, 3 p.m. tomorrow, GMT plus 8. I'll see you then. Thank you, Vanessa. Hey, and if you have any feedback or comments, please feel free to put it into the chat, either on YouTube or on TradingView. I look forward to your feedback and comments. Take care now. Bye-bye.